Hi guys, uh, it's Joy Whitlock here, and I am at Ardent Studios today, and I uh, kind of wanted to show you guys around and let you see what it looked like. Um, this is where the album God and a Girl was recorded, and um, this is where the drums were today. We finished the drums for a, a single that we are doing, and um, guitars are over here. Let me back up so you guys can get a full picture. This is uh, Studio A, and um, my cubby hole is all the way in the back, and this is where I spend most of my time, um, right in here. And you shut the door so that uh, all the sounds of the bass guitar and the drums don't bleed in through uh, the microphones. Um, we are recording a song called Beautiful today and um, it's a radio single and um, it's basically a song that I wrote just kind of talking about um, what Christ's death on the cross uh, did in my life. Um, the first verse is what it took to save me, what it took to bleed, the evidence is hanging, hanging on a tree. Um, and his death, a, a brutal death like that, <clears throat> that's what it took to save me. You know, I had searched um, for 20, 23 years for something that would fix me, you know, for a reason to get up every morning, um, a purpose of why I was here, you know, anything to fix what I knew was broken on the inside of me. And everything that I tried would not work. And the only thing that could ever fix me and can ever fix anyone is the death of the Son of God. And that's how serious um, our condition is without Christ. That is how serious the human condition is since the fall of Adam and Eve, that it took the death and the brutal death of the Son of God, of God Himself, come to earth in the flesh. That's how serious our sinful nature is. The second verse of the song is, Your sacrifice atones me, your redeeming blood. You withheld the stones from me. This is love, this is love. And uh, that was taken from uh, the passage about the adulterous woman in John chapter 8 where the Pharisees um, have caught this woman in the act of adultery and they have brought her um, in the middle of town uh, in public uh, to Jesus and uh, they did this uh, in order to to test him um, to find uh, some grounds to accuse him um, as to breaking the law and um, so they asked Jesus, what, what, what does Jesus think should be done to this woman that the, the law of Moses says that this woman should die? And um, Jesus says to them, He who is without sin, let him be the first to cast the stone at her. Um, and the passage says that one by one they dropped their rocks and left, starting with the older men first. Um, and it says he looks... He looks then at the woman and says, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? And she says, No one, Lord. And Jesus says to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go on your way, and from now on sin no more. Um, and I think what um, we usually focus on in that passage is the fact that no one is without sin. We have no right to accuse someone else because... Um, we are sinners just like everyone else. Um, but I think the important part and the main focus in the passage should be the fact that Jesus Christ had every right to condemn her. He had every right to stone her. He had every right to point the finger at her and, and legally and rightfully condemn her because he was without sin. Um, but he did not. And I think that's the point of the passage is, is that when we come 
we come before Christ as sinners, that he has every right to condemn us, and yet he doesn't. Um, and that, that's what he did in my life. He withheld the stones from me when he had every right to, to um, punish me um, for, for being a lawbreaker as I was, for practicing lawlessness and, and rebellion and unrighteousness and evil and wickedness. Um, and not only did he not condemn us, but he in fact took the punishment. And it says in Isaiah that he was marred more than any man, and marred means disfigured. The Bible says that he was disfigured more than any man. Um, and it also says in Isaiah that God was pleased to crush him. It was the Father's good will to send his only son to take our punishment, a brutal punishment, and to accept upon his shoulders the complete wrath of God. We always <clears throat> get lost sometimes in, in trying to um, understand how grand God's love is. Um, we know that it's immeasurable, but I think we leave out the fact that all of his characteristics are like that. All of his attributes <clears throat> are limitless and boundless, and that's including his wrath. Just as how we can't understand how big the love of God is, we will never understand how big the wrath of God is. And Jesus took that upon himself, and we will never have to know the wrath of God if we have given our hearts and repented of our sins and given our lives in devotion to Jesus Christ. And um, that's the long story of what this song is about. It's, it's called Beautiful, and um, it's just about what God did in my life. And even though the act and the appearance of it is probably the most gross and, and offensive thing that, that we could behold, what Jesus Christ endured on the cross, but in the same sense, it it's absolutely beautiful. Um, so today, for all of you guys who watch this, um, let's just kind of spend the rest of the day um, just going back to the to the basics. I think sometimes we we get confused with all of this doctrine and all of this theology, which is important to our spiritual lives. But let's just go back to the basics today of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us and how we will never have to feel or endure the wrath of God, ever. We can't understand it, and we will never have to endure that because Christ took care of that. Um, so let's just take the rest of this day and, and just think about what he did and, and what it means in our lives and, and um, just thank him for what he did for us. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next week.